Hey y'all, I'm Joshua Thompson. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how I turned a regular old coat closet into a more functional and useful storage space for my home recording studio. So in 2020, I bought my first house and very quickly my pandemic project became home renovations, which as it turns out, isn't a terrible way to spend quarantine. Now we did a lot of work on the house, but probably the most exciting part for me was getting to turn my basement into a full-fledged home recording studio. We opened up walls, run cables all around the house. Yes, even upstairs to the living room for the baby grand piano. We added additional insulation for soundproofing and I turned one of our extra bedrooms into the control room I'm filming in now. The main live room in the basement houses most of my larger instruments, but it became clear early on in setting up this room that I would need some additional space to store all the miscellaneous accessories. Microphones, microphone stands, extra guitar pedals, cables, you name it. Luckily, at one end of the room was a small closet with louvered doors. I decided while we were still working on the house that I definitely didn't need a clothes rack in this closet, so we added an extra shelf across the width of the closet and put some smaller shelves along the sides. For a while, that's worked out very well, but my biggest issue became storing mic stands. Now, I typically keep mic stands out to have the drum set mic'd up, my guitar amp cabinet, and the Leslie speaker cabinet. Those all have mic stands on them regularly, but all the extra stands just kind of ended up shoved in this closet. Invariably, because all of them were just leaned up against the wall, I'd reach in to grab one stand and end up knocking over the whole stack of them. Now, I apologize for this over-dramatized clip, but you get the idea. I decided that I was fed up with fighting mic stands. So I took some measurements and worked up this design to hold them all upright against the wall, but divided into different bays to keep them from falling over. So after taking all my measurements and working out my plan, I started by cutting down the plywood and the one by sixes. I cut the one by sixes in half to be three feet long each to make three foot tall dividers. And I cut the back of the sheet of plywood to match that three foot height, but wide enough to cover most of the rest of the empty space at the bottom of the closet. Oh, sorry, I'm filming this on a Saturday and I have college football on one of my screens over here. Um, at some point, I'm probably gonna do a walkthrough of what all I have in this control room, how my studio space is laid out. But right now, everything in front of me and to my right out of frame is just a total mess. So that'll have to come a little later. Anyway, once I had everything cut down, I laid it out to figure out how I wanted to spread out the dividers. I settled on eight inch spacing, which felt wide enough to easily fit two of my bigger DR Pro boom stands across the back of each bay with more stacked in front. I marked out my spacing on the plywood and drilled holes for my screws. Then one by one, I drilled matching holes on the one by six boards, one at the top, one at the bottom, and one in the center. And I screwed them in, adding a little bit of wood glue to help hold everything together. Now I had a brand new bottle of wood glue for this project and I definitely used way too much on the first one by six board, but luckily I was able to wipe it all away without any ill effects. The second one went on smoothly enough after that, but on the third and the fourth board, I did have a screw poke out the side of the one by six. Now, if I were to do this all again, I probably would have gotten some two inch screws. Um, all I had laying around was inch and a half and three inch deck screws. And I used the three inch for most of this, but I think they were just a little too long. And that's what ended up splitting those boards. Also, if I had some kind of better rig to hold all this up and screw it in from a better angle, that probably would have helped too. But I just used the saw horses I had laying around from when we did the home renovations and it worked out okay in the end. But anyway, after I finished screwing and gluing the dividers onto my piece of plywood, I turned to painting. Now painting was definitely my least favorite part about renovating my house. I'm not very good at painting and I don't really like it, but I knew I had to paint this before I put it in my closet. I think in hindsight, priming each of the boards before I screwed it all together would have been the right move because it ended up taking three coats of paint as it was and it was a bit of a pain to get the brush into all those corners. Luckily, I had plenty of white trim paint left over from the house. Once the paint had dried, I took the divider inside to start working on mounting it to the wall. I had previously found and marked the studs above, so once I had got the piece roughly into place, I was able to get one screw in, level it off, and then get another screw into a stud to make it sturdy. 
I used the three inch deck screws here again for all this mounting. I added a couple more screws below my first set to make sure it was extra secure. Now on the left hand side, I had some extra space to work with, so I picked up these hanging brackets from Lowe's to put mic cables on. It looked like I had enough room to get two of these hanging brackets in side by side, but I wanted to make sure it would fit, so I waited until I had it inside instead of putting them on while it was still outside. The one on the left lined up with a stud, so it's super solid, and I'll keep the heavier mic cables on it. The hanger on the right is just into the plywood and drywall, but it still feels plenty secure, perfectly fine for 15 foot and 25 foot XLR cables. So let's see how it all turned out. I think adding in this extra piece made the closet a lot more useful for me. It eliminated some clutter and it keeps everything accessible so that if I need to record something in a hurry, I can quickly get everything ready. I obviously learned a few things on this project, especially using the right size fastener for the job. And I think next time I make it out to the hardware store, I'm just gonna go ahead and buy a couple boxes of different size screws so that I have more on hand for my next project. But overall, I'm very happy with how everything turned out. And I'm happy that I was able to plan it all and execute it all within one day. Thanks so much for tuning in today, and please remember to subscribe to keep up with my other projects going forward. I've already gotten some great feedback from some of you on my first video, but I'm always looking for more ways that I can improve, create better content, and more engaging content. So please comment down below if you have any feedback or suggestions on how I could have better tackled this project. Otherwise, I'll see you in my next video.